Welcome to a new episode of the Stick and Move podcast. I'm your host, Trey, here with my co-host, Sam. And today we're talking about the top three boogeymen in boxing history. We're not going to waste any time here. Sam, who is your number three? Talk to me. All right, guys. Uh, thank you for joining us and watching our channel. All right. We're going to talk about the three boogeymen, well, at least on my my end. And it, it, it's it's from my experience of what I've seen recent and past right right now right now my number one well my number three i guess we're starting from the bottom up my number three i have to put him there because he's being avoided he's being avoided by teal he's being avoided by shakur he's being avoided by tank and Ooh. it's devin haney for me Ooh, devin haney wow. is the Devin I did Haney not see is, that coming, man. Yeah, Devin Haney, for me, is the boogeyman of the lightweight division. I think people just don't... They, they know how skilled he is. They know how tough the matchup is. The guy is getting bigger and stronger and faster. And he is a train that is on fire, bro. And Devin Haney is being avoided by all the lightweights. Devin Haney, for me, being undefeated... Being um, calling everybody out, bro. He was after Teal. He was after Tank. He right after the Loma. He was calling out Tank. He, he, he beating everybody. All right. He the the great fight. The, the day I became a huge fan of Devin Haney is when he stood his ground against George uh, Linares. Devin Haney is my number three boogeyman right now of boxing. Listen, bro. I don't mind you going currently. I'm you know. You know, we tend to go a little bit further back into our 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 lifetime, maybe a little mm -hmm. bit earlier. But I will say this, bro. He is somebody. You're right, calling everybody else. Yeah. In my opinion, I think the guy he beat is a little bit more of a boogeyman in Lomachenko because of that awkward style. But I can see mm -hmm. what you're saying. I mean, I think what Ryan Garcia is clamoring onto when he wants to fight Devin Haney is more because he he wants to rebound from his loss against Tank Davis, and he's already familiar with that. I think Devin Haney and him are actually tied in the uh, amateur. I think they're tied three three if I'm not mistaken. So I think he knows him, and and Garcia feels like he can run with them. But going back to him being the boogeyman in that lightweight division. You're right, man. And I think the reason why Tank Davis and Stevenson and, and all these guys want to avoid him is because if you're going to get in a fight with that guy, he is going to get in the phone book with you. Mm -hmm. He's going to throw down with you. I actually think at 135, I was a little bit more worried about him. He was getting wobbled a lot at 135. I think at 140, he is super comfortable there. I think he can take the punches there, which is which is really strange because he could take it more. I think he filled out a little bit more and a little bit better. And I think he's going to rule that division for as long as he wants to stay there, man. There's no reason for him, for him to go back. I think 140 is his home. I think he should stay there. I, I'm cool with him being your, your number three, man. Go ahead. Yeah, I want to make another bold statement about Devin Haney. And how, this is how much of a, of a fan I am of Devin Haney. I have a bold statement to make. Devin Haney right now is on pace to being a better boxer, better career in boxing um, than Floyd Mayweather. One. Wow. Yeah, wow. one. Wow. Two. And this is my final one. One year, bro. In one year, Devin Haney, I, I say Devin Haney beats the brakes off of Bud Crawford, bro. Wow, really? In one year. Yeah. If Cropper stays at 147. If they stay at 147. Because Cropper's going that, up to 160 to fight Eubanks. You yeah, I mean, yeah, but he's going to learn real quick that that's not where he belongs. So you think he's going to go back down? Yeah, he's going to come back. He's probably going to try to roll the 154 where Tim Zhu and maybe uh, Jamel are at. You know what I mean? Uh, that would actually be interesting because if Eubanks, he's going to lose to Cropper. 
unless he knocks him out. They're not going to – it's one of those, like, Crawford's a potential face of boxing. The only way you beat him is by knocking him out. So even if he beats him on points, they're not going to give it to Eubanks, you know, or to the public opinion. Yeah, yeah. It, but I ahead. think still, kind of like what Roy Jones, when he fought Reese, would go right back down to light heavyweight – Pacquiao, uh, uh, Margarito. You know, uh-huh. I don't think he was never the same. Yeah. Roy Jones, obviously. That couldn't happen to Crawford. And I think that would mm-hmm. be a good time for, now this is a perfect world scenario, for Haney to jump up to 147 now that Crawford is kind of it's like, gone. A, is punch drunk, doesn't have that fire anymore. Yeah. And maybe shock the world. I could see yeah. that happen. Yeah. I yeah. See that I mean, happen. Manny Pacquiao did it with Margarito when they asked yeah. him after the fight. They told him, Are you ready to win it? You know, about defending the title. He says, Y'all can have it. I don't want it. Yeah. I'm going yeah. back. Yeah. That was exactly. just way too much. Anyway. That's, that's, a, that's a far out one. Uh, Devin Haney, I wasn't expecting that. This soon, but you know, right now nobody does want to fight him. Nobody wants to fight him, and we're not even sure Ryan's going to fight him. Anyways, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. so what's <laughs> so uh, what is your number three, dude? If you and I were to do an episode on Ryan Garcia oh, right my now, gosh. it would be one of those twenty-four hour long episodes, bro. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, back to the point. My number three is actually, hey guys, Trey here. If you love today's controversial episode and you want to see our channel grow, please drop a like, subscribe, and also comment. Sam and I are always going back and forth with those commenters on our controversial topics and opinions, and we love it so much. So go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe, most importantly, so our channel can grow and we can give you guys the best content as possible. Sam and I were always uploading multiple videos a week, and we want to continue doing that, and we need your help. So go ahead and subscribe, guys. And most importantly, like I always say, don't forget to stick and move, baby. See? Manny Pacquiao. Okay? All right. Here all is right. a guy that he climbed up. What was it? How many weight classes did he go up, bro? He went up from, like, super flyweight all the way to super welter. I mean, I'm super... Welterweight, if I'm not mistaken, right? Mm -hmm. And he did it, bro, with control. You know? Yeah, did he get robbed a couple of times against Bradley? When was it at, if I'm not mistaken, at Welterweight? But, dude, he took on every comer. Whoever was hot at the time, I'm going to fight you. He was in the middle of three trilogies with, with, uh, with Marquez, fought four times, Morales, and Barrera. I mean, this is a guy... That if you were going to get in the ring with him, because of his, his southpaw style, because of his crazy, probably my favorite head movement that was hard to time, you know, uh, and of course, his great endurance and speed. and pa- I mean, he was the full package. You know what I'm saying? You knew that if you're going to get in a fight with this my, Manny Pacquiao guy, guy, that it was going to be a war. So... When I think of top three boogeymen, here was a guy that if you're not, you were not going to avoid him because he was going to come to you. If you were making noise, you know what? You don't want to fight me. I'm going to go to you. I'm going to go to you, Mickey Hat, Mickey Hatton, who at Ricky the time Hatton. was who was supposedly like, you know, I don't know where he got all this hype from, but all of a sudden he fights Pacquiao, fights Mayweather, and it was done. You know. He went to the fighters. He didn't avoid anybody. And, you know, when he laced on the gloves, he was ready to fight. What was it? I think out of the four matches of Marquez, he only went down one time in the fourth fight. I think it was in that third round. You know, it took him four fights for Marquez to finally knock down Pacquiao and then knock him out later the second time in the final time. But for me, Manny Pacquiao is my number three. you have any thoughts? Yes, I'm going to agree with you 100% that he is a, a, a boogeyman. This is why. I agree with you that Manny Pacquiao is a, boog- a boogeyman. Why? Manny Pacquiao. Uh, Manny Pacquiao was so good, bro, that the, sold call, the so-called greatest of all time hey, avoided him. Think about that. Av- avoided him for seven years, bro. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's how much of a boogeyman Manny Pacquiao was. Mm-hmm. But Floyd wanted no parts of Manny. Dude, I was a huge boxing fan like you. 
I remember through the 90s, late 90s, early 2000s, watching Manny Pacquiao dominate the whole boxing world, bro. Mm -hmm. And I didn't hear nothing about Floyd. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where was Floyd? Where yeah. was he? Mm -hmm. Manny was in, in trilogies after tri trilogies that destroying Margarito, who Floyd completely avoided. I mean, you know, the beating that Manny Pacquiao gave Cotto Ooh, was way yeah. worse than what Floyd did to Cotto. Well, you can you can arguably be say that Cotto, besides Luis Castillo, gave pa uh, Mayweather the worst beating he ever had. Yeah. You know, bloodied him up, puffed up, puffed his face up. Everything. So that I agree a hundred. I agree a hundred percent. Manny Pacquiao is a boogie man. I love that number three man. Well, yeah. I mean, I could go all day. You and I have had countless episodes and conversations about Manny Pacquiao. So we'll leave it at that. Maybe be a little too low now that I think about it. But who's your I number know, two? Right? Talk to me. My number two is Triple G. Ooh, Triple right, G. I mean, dude, where's Charlo, bro? Where's yeah. Jamal Charlo and Triple G, bro? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Triple G, you know how tough it was for 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 the world to get Canelo to get in the ring with Triple G, bro? Triple mm -hmm. G's ready for all the smoke, man. And nobody wants to get in the ring with them, man. Nobody. Supposedly it, 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 Andre Ward as I, well. I was just going to say that. <laughs> and Andre Ward was not coming back from retirement to face Triple G. Yeah. Triple G is a tank, bro. I've never seen him hurt. He just comes forward. He has one of the best chins I've ever seen in a boxer. The guy has been avoided his whole career, bro. I agree. The only opponent that he had that was well worth that I've given him a fight was Canelo. Nobody else wanted that smoke, bro. And Nobody. I didn't, I didn't think about that. Nobody has really given him a fight. Nobody, bro. Ice Canelo. Yeah, you're right, bro. Wow, I didn't even think about that. And I'll say this too about Triple G. You know, he's right be he's right behind me on my picture. And it's because I had a 50-50 love for him growing into that that Canelo fight. And I'll say this about Triple G, bro. His skills, bro, were very in my opinion, very underrated. I kind of I want to know where it got lost. I mean, he spoke English better than Canelo. But yet Canelo, even though many people say that Triple G robbed him, you know, you and I did an episode. You and I both agree Canelo yeah. won that first fight. Yeah. But anyways, when we scored it, we'll put it was one of our on first episode. episodes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we Sam and I scored the Canelo Triple G one, and we both had for uh, Canelo. Anyways, mm. I'll put that on the link. Um, Triple G, bro, his skill, I, I just, it bothers me that yeah, he had HBO on lockdown. Was it HBO or Showtime? I'm trying to remember that he was I on. Remember. I think it was HBO because that was with Roy Jones, right? And um, shit, it could be Showtime. Anyways, uh, I'll say this. It's a shame he didn't really get that publicity where Ganello took the reins and, you know, became the face of boxing, even after a disputed win or draw with Triple G, he was the boogeyman. I agree with you. I think that's a solid, solid, solid. Charlo, Charlo never mentioned his name, bro. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A 160-pounder, bro, never mentioned Triple G's name, bro. And he got away with it. Yeah, yeah. Nobody said nobody anything ever, about it. Nobody, nobody said him. Charlo should fight. Oh, Triple he's G. a nobody dog, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah Anyways. Yeah. All right. So what's your number two? Here's a shocker, bro. Well, maybe not. Mm. But I'm going to go George Foreman, brother. Mm. Yeah, okay. George Foreman, my man. I mean, you and I saw his renaissance in the 80s and 90s. But, bro, I remember my father and my uncle telling me stories about how nobody wanted to fight George Foreman because, one, what he did to Joe Frazier, that iconic call. D. Ali's trainer right next to me is saying it. You may hear him. Down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. The heavyweight. Cool. And it took a master plan that was so dangerous from Muhammad Ali to pull off that changed the boxing world. 
I mean, even though I don't like talk, I don't really like talking about other uh, podcasters or or analysts. You know, there's many testimonies. Stephen A. Smith, he even says that when he was a kid, I'm paraphrasing, that his father was crying that he couldn't believe that Ali and Foreman were going to get in the ring. Scariest in his prime, the scariest fighter. The person that I thought about was George Foreman. Remember, his first loss came against Muhammad Ali. I believe at that particular moment in time, he was like 40 and 0 or 41 and 0. It was one or the other with like 30 40 and AOs. This dude, the, the, I mean, 40 and 0, right? It was 40 and 0? 40 and 0, 37 knockouts when he fought Ali. 40 and 0, 37 knockouts b- b- before he <laughs> lost to Muhammad Ali. And remember how he knocked Joe Frazier upside his head when Joe Frazier literally tried to run away from him and knocked him at the top, knocked him upside his head to knock him out? Remember that? Remember what he did to Ken Norton? Remember what he did to a slew of guys? What about him against Ron Lyle and all of these guys? George Foreman was absolutely spectacular. And it's a personal thing with me, Max, because I was a young kid when him and Allie fought in 1974. I'll never forget as long as I live. My father was actually crying because he was scared to death that Muhammad Ali was going to get killed. Not knocked out, killed. That's how vicious and violent George Foreman was. That's how big of a monster that George Foreman was. Not to mention, here's a cherry on top. There was, I mean, it was more of a sideshow act, but there was a time where George Foreman fought five times in one day. And I remember I've seen that video many times. He fought five times in one day, wiped out everybody. Muhammad Ali on the uh, doing the PA announcing with um, with Cosell. This guy epitomized. He had the height, he had the size, the phenomenal stare down, and that guy was just a truck of a boogeyman. Go ahead. So do you think that Mike Tyson avoided George Foreman? Well, it goes both ways. I think it goes both ways. That's that's the controversy. You know what I'm saying? Dude, I mean, I mean, dude, look at how scary George Foreman was, bro. That Muhammad Ali's own corner, his own people were scared to death, bro, about this fight. Exactly. Do you remember that? I saw that clip of that. Yeah. Where he's trying to hype up, you know, he's like, Well, are we going to a funeral or what? Everybody (laughs) would just sad. And here's the crazy um, thing. No, go ahead, mm, go say it. No, no, but there was mentions of that. That 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 Foreman was that Mike Tyson avoided Foreman, bro. Even at that age, at forty six, I don't know how old he was. Even he just though, didn't no one, he didn't want no part of it. Go ahead. Even though George Foreman on his comeback was a softer version, bro, he was a tank, bro. You know what I'm saying? What uh, he did to Cooney with that walk off knockout, bro. I mean, that is a classic. I mean, he only had two losses before. Before retiring, went to Muhammad Ali and I think to Jimmy Young, and he called it for his religious awakening. He comes back and what ten years later, he runs through everybody, even rec- reclaiming the heavyweight title from Michael Moore, who was what a nine-time defensive champion, yeah. Hall of Fame, uh, uh, heavyweight champion. So it goes to show you that this guy, I mean, he literally transcended time. So we'll leave it at that one. Number two. What's your number one, brother? My number one is Sonny Liston, bro. Ooh, talk to me. Sonny Liston, it, it, I was reading earlier today that Frazier avoided Sonny Liston, bro. Ooh, yeah. Joe Frazier would fight Muhammad Ali. Joe Frazier went through that, that you know, death trap with George Foreman, but he avoided Sonny Liston, bro. They, uh, Muhammad Ali, George Foreman, have talked about how brutal and a bully and a monster Sonny Liston is in the ring, bro. Mm-hmm. And Igmar Johansson avoided uh, Sonny Liston. The guy was just so avoided by 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 many greats that people admired, bro. And I mean, you could read about it, his history that um he was just a fighter that nobody wanted to get in a match with. I mean, dude, that guy was even Muhammad Ali. I remember saying. That Sonny Liston was just a scary, scary dude, bro. And here's the other thing, bro. There's speculation that Marciano called it a, a career because, well, I don't want to say, be, I mean, he had other reasons, but, you know, the up and coming at the time, Sonny Liston was there. And many people believe that Marciano 
got out at the right time. That if Marciano wow. would have fought a legit Sonny Young, Sonny Liston, that Marciano's would not be that perfect record. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. I agree with you, man. Uh, Sonny Liston, bro. Look, he knocked out Floyd Patterson twice in the first round. I mean, I know Floyd Patterson was older, but Floyd Patterson at the time was already a legend, already a Hall of Famer, man. And to take out a legend like that twice in the first round, I mean, it goes to show you that devastating left hook, uppercut, just pretty much left, lefty that he was, was transcended Dude. in the heavyweight division. Go ahead. And Sonny Liston was a monster, bro. Mm -hmm. When I saw when I saw footage of him, man, that dude was he was imagine. I know it's hard for people people imagine this. Just imagine a more jacked up Mike Tyson, bro. That, I, I mean, would that say guy, that's what he was, like bro. A, he was like a football player, like a linebacker, mm -hmm. boxer, bro. Mm -hmm. I mean, that what a scary dude, man. Uh, yeah, he's my number one. I think that's a perfect way. Uh, I think it was Sonny Liston. Uh, and then after him was Frazier, the, those guys with the crazy left or the crazy hooks. I think Tyson was the 80s version of him. I think the 90s version of him could have been. I mean, who knows? But to me, it starts with Sonny Liston. I have him here on my list. I left him off purposely. Because I was hoping you would cover him. So I had yeah. him on reserve just in case you didn't have him. So I think that's mm -hmm. a fantastic, fantastic number one. So but what is your number one? I'm going back into time, brother. I'm going way back. And I'm going Sam Langford. Bro. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Dude, dude. The Boston Bone Crusher, even though he was from Canada. But, dude, this is a guy that was 178 wins, 30 losses, 38 yeah. Uh, uh, ties he had 126 KOs, brother. Yeah, he would fight guys. I think it was five foot five, five foot seven, more or less around there. He would fight guys constantly that were 20 pounds heavier. And dude, he even fought the great legendary Jack Johnson, brother. Goes wow. 15 rounds with them. Jack Johnson, if I'm not mistaken, outweighed him by 30 pounds. And they went 15 rounds, brother. I was having a conversation with, with one of our commenters, uh, uh, P. Fitzger 2E1. Uh, he was, him and I were going back and forth, and he was telling me, he gave me an education, which is fantastic, that once Sam Langford put on an extra 30 pounds, that Jack Johnson wanted nothing to do with him. You and I just had an episode of Skills versus uh, Skills Pay the Bills versus. Uh, uh, weight classes for a reason. This is one of those scenarios where saying Langford was the silver line, silver lining between the two, brother. Like he was just a bulldog in the ring. He didn't care who he was fighting. He was just a straight up brawler that you knew if you were going to fight this guy, that you were going to lose five to 10 years of your life. You were definitely going to walk out with a, a jaw realignment, uh, CTE in the brain, even though they didn't really talk about that back in the days. But for me, Sam Langford, bro, is a forgotten boxing hero yeah. that people need to to brush up in their history and bring him back. I think you and I, a couple of episodes, we ago, covered you it. Said, yeah, you said there should be a movie about him. Any thoughts on my number one right there? Yeah, dude, I love that number one. Um, he, dude, I. I they got to make a movie about him, bro. Mm -hmm. That guy, 176, bro, yeah. wins? Yeah. 126 178. KOs? 178? Yeah. 126 knockouts? There was a period in his career. They called him the best boxer in the world, bro. Right. Every, right. You know, they had, they had ever seen it. And, right. I mean, the guy, I just want to see more of that dude. Mm -hmm. I think he needs to be covered. I think they need a, they need to... You know, let the world know who this guy was. You know what I mean? You know, that's a legendary boxer made history with Jack Johnson, bro. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, that is ridiculous, man. Um, I love that number one. That's a great number one. Here's another little cherry on top before we move on. Dude, 
Jack Johnson, if I'm not mistaken, he fought competitively for 30 years, bro. I think from like 1897 to about 1925, 26, somewhere around mm-hmm. there, 27. Dude, uh, uh, Sam Langford did the same. I think he fought from 1902 to 1920-ish, around there. Dude, these guys were not only fighting multiple plus five plus times a year, but they did it for such a long period of time. Just goes to show you who these guys were back in the day. Any one of those guys were boogeymen. Go ahead. Yeah, they they were just built different, bro. They were fighting under the sun outside, man. And then, you know, let's, let's not forget, you know, the environment they were in. Mm-hmm. at the time you know what i'm saying um uh, being called whatever and you know they they faced a lot of adversity you know and they they i mean dude i want to brush up more about uh, we got to make an episode all yeah. about sam langford we have to bro it just you know, i love that number one the, the, the i mean the guy was giving everybody the work man by the way he fought a lot of his fights because the only you know, there was, they, I know they had the black circuit in America, but it was hard to get those fights. He fought a lot in mm-hmm. Mexico, actually. A lot of his fights were in Mexico, not so much against Mexican fighters, but also against African American fighters that were, you know, getting paid better in Mexico at the time. I mean, I remember when I would do research on this guy, that caught my eye. You know, Mexico has always been liberal with, uh, with Africans, especially way back in the days. I mean, we could go into regular history where, you know, slavery was not allowed in Mexico. The whole reason why Texas became Texas is because the people that came in, the old 300 settlers, they wanted to keep their slaves. And Mexico was like, no, you can't have any. When the Negro Leagues of Baseball were happening in America, they would spend their off seasons in Mexico, in Cuba, in Latin America, so they could play full year and get the better pay. So I'm not surprised guys like Langford and all these other uh, uh, boxers from back then would go to Mexico to fight and create a legacy. Unfortunately, it's getting forgotten, you know? Yeah. And yeah. we need to redo that. And you're right. We will do an episode on Jack Johnson, Langford, all those old goats uh, eventually soon. So any boxers you left off? Um, and, and boxes that, that were avoided that I left off. Let me and, tell you one, bro. Let me tell okay, you. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I did have Triple G, but I also had Maravilla, bro. Sergio Martinez on there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, got uh, yeah. Paul Williams. I had Loma as well. I mean, there have been so many great uh, uh, boogeyman. Who did you leave off? You know, you know who I think was Margarito avoided. Too? You know who I think was, was avoided a lot. I mean, yes, we got we got we got to see him versus Chavez. We did get to see, but you know, in my opinion, he beat Chavez. Uh, we saw him uh, uh, versus De La Hoya. In my opinion, De La Hoya won that one. Was Pernell Whitaker, bro? Mm. I feel that he was ducked a lot, man. Yeah. I feel yeah. that when when De La Hoya fought Pernell Whitaker, man, you could see it in De La Hoya's face. He did not want it, bro. Mm-hmm. He didn't mm-hmm. want it, even though I got De La Hoya winning that fight. He did not want. He did not want it, bro. Yeah. And and go ahead. Well, I know De La Hoya felt like he was just such an awkward fighter. Yeah, he's just know? difficult, and I think that's why people avoided him. Mm-hmm. And, you know, because his defense was just so good, and Pernell Whitaker has a style that makes you look stupid, bro. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying. So yeah, he was one that I avoided. I wanted to make a case about it, but I left him out. Yeah, that's a great one. I mean, dude, Pernell Whitaker, he had that, first of all, Southpaw. And second of all, he had like that long stretch of a stance where his his left his right foot was like behind it felt like it was behind his opponent's uh back foot, you know? Yeah, yeah. And he was yeah. just so quick. So I'm cool with that being your guy that you left off. I guess your three B. So yeah. Any words for our audience out there, my man? Yeah, I'd like just to uh, thank everybody. We're trying to, you know, reach everybody in the comment section. And um, 
Thank you guys for, you know, liking our, our videos, watching our videos. Please share so we can grow and continue making more content. And um, if there's anything that y'all want us to make, you know, an episode about, let us know and we'll Absolutely. cover it. Absolutely. I couldn't have said it any better. If you get a message from Sam, it's Stick and Move Sam 75. I am the Stick and Move podcast. And don't forget to stick and move, baby. I am the greatest. I wish I was 50 years younger and I'd kick your ass.